right. So. All right. I'd like to welcome everybody to the regularly scheduled Planning Commission meeting for May 11, 2023. If you would, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we have a uh, fairly short agenda, so let's get this show on the road. Ms. Lidar, are there any updates to the agenda? Good morning. We have at the August 11, 2022 and April 13, 2023, minutes for approval and minutes for approval for February 10, 2022 and April 14, 2022. Very good, thank you. Um, Ms. Shank, is there anything from the county attorney's office? Nothing, sir. Very good. Thank you. Um, with that, since we do have minutes for uh, approval, um, the uh, can we take these all at once, or do we, they need to be uh, considered one at a time? Any, anybody? Just read the motion, both dates, and they approve both sets of minutes. Okay. All right. With regard to the... Uh, uh, minutes. Um, are there any changes or updates to the uh, uh, to the minutes? Anyone have any? Okay. All right. With that, the chair will consider a motion. Mr. Smaka made a motion. Mr. Turner second. Uh, if you would please go ahead and vote. All right. With that, um, we have a. a approve the minutes with all um, commissioners present voting yay and Mr. Uh, Roth being absent. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. The next um, item on the agenda are citizen comments. And this is related to anything that is not on today's agenda. Um, this is limited to future items. So if there's anybody who wishes to make a comment or statement regarding a future item, please come forward. Um, if you have a uh, a desire to speak on an application, you'll have an opportunity when that application is being heard. So is there anybody who has a desire to make a comment on a future agenda? Okay, seeing no one come forward, we're going to go on to advertise public uh, um, applications, public hearings. Um, Ms. Leiter, can you please read item number one into the record? Item number one, C2304, this Rosier's excavation rezone, this Rosier excavation INC owner, and it's a quasi judicial case, a rezone of more or less uh, 13 acres from A1 Agriculture Suburban to LM Lime Manufacturing Zoning District, part of a 15 acre site, two acres are already zoned Lime Manufacturing, and being generally located north of Talabas Road on the size of 28th Street Court is commonly known as 7325 28th, 28th Street Court is Sarasota, Manatee County. And here represented the applicant is Mr. Smith and the uh, case manager is Ms. Monica Gunn. Very good. Thank you very much. As this is quasi-judicial, if we could, if anybody intends to speak on either application today, if you would please rise to be sworn in as both are quasi-judicial. If you don't do it now, you'll have to be sworn in when you come up to speak. Thank you, and Ms. Mr. Schmidt, before you uh, begin, um, have there been any ex parte communications regarding this application? No. Oh, okay, hearing none, Mr. Schmidt, if you could please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Planning Commission. For the record, my name is Bob Schmidt with Land Planning Associates, and I have been sworn. Thank you. Uh, my client is with me today. His name is John DeRosier, and he sits right back here. If there's any particular questions on the property that I can't answer, then he can. But I'm going to be brief because this is a pretty straightforward application, and I'm going to use the staff report map maps just to illustrate uh, a few things. So here is the overall aerial, and you can see the location. You see down in the lower left-hand corner is the airport. Uh, this is um, east of 301. If you take Talavast East and turn left on 28th Street Court East, which is a street that it's a local road that connects between Whitfield and, and Talavast. 
This parcel's on the right-hand side, um, just north of McLeod Excavating, which you will see in this picture here. This is McLeod. This is already industrial, um, and then this is the 15-acre piece in the middle that kind of was left um, in A1 zoning. Um, it's, it's a little strange. You can see here in the future land use maps that it is IL. And in fact, when my client contacted me about doing a rezone on this property, I said, I don't think you need me. But yes, he did, because it is zoned A1, except for the corner piece up here, which was left LM. I'm not sure about the history of that, but that is, um, that is the circumstance. So we, are just, we just have a survey of the entire property and are asking to rezone the entire piece to LM, which is consistent with the IL future land use category. Um, I did read the staff report and concur with its findings, and uh, we asked for your approval. There's no site plan to speak of, so uh, if you have any questions about that, they'll be dealt with administratively. But I'll be happy to answer any questions, or Mr. DeRosier can if I cannot. Very good. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the applicant? Okay. Uh, just... Just one quick question. It looks like in the aerial that it's currently being utilized for some activity. Is that, is that true? Uh, Correct? There's some agricultural beekeeping uh, ongoing on the property. And that's, Sounds that's very intensive. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with the agricultural zoning, it's, it's about all you can do. Very good. Thank you. All right. Who do we have for staff? Good morning. Is this your first planning commission? Uh, yes, it is. All right, we'll, we'll be... You should not be terrified. Yeah, we'll be kind. Uh, so, Monica Gann, Planner 1 for Development Services. Uh, just a correction. So, um, it was advertised for 15 acres, but it's really 14.8 uh, acres um, total site. Um, Future land use designation is, as the applicant said, it's industrial light. Um, <laughs> indicates that the LM is implementing zoning district, so it fits within the zoning, zoning district. So the request is for a rezone of the 13 acres that are zoned A1, um, agricultural suburban to a light manufacturing to allow the entire site parcel to be developed according to the LM requirements of the LDC. The request is consistent with the future land use category, which allows light industrial uses that do not create objectable impacts with regard to height of accessory or incidental structures, um, noise, smoke, dust, vibration, or glare. Additional clarification on the means of measuring and determining objectionable impact is found in the policy of 2.6.3.1 of the comp plan. Offices, research, and corporate uses, intensive or wholesale commercial uses, service uses in privately operated airports, selective residential uses, and support uses such as neighborhood commercial, recreation, public or semi-public uses, and schools is in accordance to the objection um, objectives. So the request is to just rezone the small parcel on the upper uh, west corner. Uh, the proposed LM zoning district differs in uses from the existing A1 zoning district in the following manner. Some of the potential uses that are permitted in the L LM district are, per are not permitted in the A1 zoning district, such as um, auction houses, building materials sales establishments, lumber yards, gas pumps, restaurants, retail sales, neighborhood conveniences, service stations, business services, car washes, equipment sales, food catering service establishments, um, banking, vehicle repairs, wholesale trade establishment, industrial light and flea markets, open and intensive services, towing services, outdoor storage, parking, commercial mini warehouses, self-storage and warehouses. So some of the positive aspects um, with the rezone will allow more light manufacturing service to come into the area, uh, light, LM zoning districts preside for a greater buffering and building setbacks when adjacent to sing single family residential zoning, which if you look towards the east, there is a subdivision off to the east of the property, uh, subject property. 
negative aspects, the parcel abuts to a residential subdivision to the east, uh, the future site plan. Final site plan will need to provide an adverse impact statement containing relevant and compliant analysis in that regard. The adjacent residential areas could be potentially impacted by noise, light, and odors from the above mentioned allow uses in the light manufacturing zoning district. Mitigating feature uh, measures, a lightning plan in compliance with the LDC regulations will be required to be submitted at the final site plan stage and the LDC code section 531 standard for accessory and specific uses and structures provide standards for specific uses that might have negative externalities and have requirements for additional landscaping and buffering for certain industrial or manufacturing uses next to residential uses. Mitigation measures will be administratively reviewed at the time of submittal of final site plan. I'm open to any questions that the board might have. Very good. Are, are there any questions for staff? Yes, sir. No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. With that, we're going to go to the public comment portion of the hearing. So if there's anybody in the audience who wishes to come forward to speak to this application, please do so. Anyone at all? Okay, seeing no one come forward, we're going to close the public comment portion of the hearing, and I'm going to open it up for um, the Planning Commission. Is there any additional information we need to make a decision regarding this application? Okay, so staff closing comments. Thank you. Uh, applicant rebuttal. All right, we're going to close the public hearing, and the um, chair will consider uh, a motion or discussion, deliberation, whatever, whatever the board would... Uh, all right, we have a motion by Ms. Kiba and a second by Mr. Turner. If you would, please vote on this application. We need some music or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, with that, uh, the application is approved 7-0. Um, all, all commissioners voted in favor. All right, we're going to move on to the next item on the agenda, but unfortunately I have a, a conflict and I'll have to recuse myself. I'm going to step away from the dais and turn it over to Mr. Rutledge. Mr. Rutledge, it's all yours. Fear for your life. Okay. Um, good morning. Thank you for showing up, everybody. Uh, first of all, we'd like to uh, read any additions or changes uh, that you might have for the submission? No. And may I ask, has anybody had any kind of, Mr. Roth, have you had any kind of um, discussion no. about this outside yes, no. of the conditions? No, no preamble. <laughs> Just want to be sure. Um, okay, could you read it into the record for us, please? Yes, item number two, PDC 2212, CP. Storage Space Ellington, PSP Rison Storage CIP Ellington GBLP, and it's a quasi judicial case and it's a Rison of more or less 3.62 acres, generally located 300 feet north of US 301 Highway and 72 Avenue East Victory Road at 2704 72 Avenue is in Ellington, Manatee County, from Neighborhood Commercial Medium, MCM, to a Planned Development Commercial, PDC, Sony District, and approving, approving a preliminary site plan for a mini warehouse, self store facility, limited the maximum square footage to 120,600 1, square feet. And the case manager is Mr. Kevin Oldman, and here representing the applicant is Mr. Kovicash. Sorry to say. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> is there anybody who's going to speak on this that has not been sworn in? We can take care of that early. Oh, fantastic. Thanks. Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming down to see us, and uh, please make your presentation. Good morning. My name is Joe Kovicash. I'm an attorney from the Lowndes Law Firm. Um, I do have... I'm sorry? <laughs> I, I do have some slides. I'll run through them um, somewhat briefly. Several slides are just there if there's any concerns or questions that come up that we need to address in more detail. I am sworn, yes. I apologize. Um, so this is a rezone through the site plan process, 
And um, we do have one additional request for a reduction to the parking ratio from 26 to 12 spaces, and that is supported um, by the applicant submissions and in the staff report, which I'll go into briefly. So um, this is in uh, unincorporated M Manatee County. It's, it's in um, Ellington, approximately 3.62 acres. Current future land use is residential nine, um, which does allow what the applicant is seeking to do. Current zoning is neighborhood commercial medium, and we are seeking a rezone to plan development commercial. The property is currently vacant. Again, the applicant is seeking to put a uh, mini warehouse self-storage facility, three stories, 120,000 square feet approximately between all three stories with a, approximately 40,000 square foot footprint. The parcel is um, somewhat oddly shaped. It is a bit long and narrow. There's the future land use map um, showing adjacent land uses and the zoning map showing adjacent zoning designations. Uh, the current preliminary site plan up for approval prepared by Kim Lee Horn. Uh, this is the site. You can see in the middle is the warehouse structure with parking an entry on either side and a retention area to the far right of the screen. Again, this is a preliminary site plan. Approval today will not allow any construction. The applicant still has to complete the final site plan process. Final site plan will be in much more detail, um, addressing all of the uh, conditions and issues in the staff report and all those issues that are mentioned on the PSP. Another image, um, this one shows the right of way and uh, a little more detail on the site. Environmental um, issues that, that may, um, we want to address, wetland impacts, we are, uh, there is a total of 0 0.19 wetlands on the site, uh, acres wetlands. Proposed impact only 0 0.093. The applicant proposes offsite mitigation. The details again will be concluded, uh, included in the final site plan. I do want to point out that the, uh, the, our site plan exceeds the minimum open space requirement. The requirement's 20%, we have 60% open space. There, I understand there was a, a concern from an area resident about some transportation or traffic issues. As is indicated in the staff report, self-storage is a low traffic generator. The entire business model is based on people bringing their stuff there and leaving it there, hopefully for a long period of time. Um, so there's not a lot of daily traffic. We also have given a future right-of-way uh, easement along the roadway. And our internal circulation, again, it's an oddly shaped lot, but we do on the site plan account for fire trucks, fire engines, moving trucks, and city refuse vehicles. And it, the site plan itself shows the flow patterns and that all these vehicles will fit. The special request for reduction in parking ratio is supported by submissions of the applicant. Again, we're only seeking a reduction from 24 spaces to 12 spaces. Uh, we do have data in our application that supports the number. Um, and we do have studies from other properties in there. Again, that supports that number from 24 to 12. Staff is in agreement. So I want to highlight a few staff findings. Uh, this non-residential project is proposed in an appropriate location with minor impacts on the water, sewer, and roadway capacity in the area. Many warehouse stuff storage use typically have a significantly reduced impact per square foot when compared to other uses that could 
locate at a commercial node. Um, its proximity to the residential areas that it will serve reduces travel distances and contributes to maintaining roadway level of service. Minimum buffers and setbacks and preliminary landscape guidelines proposed in the PSP meet the code requirements to provide separation from the adjacent residential areas. Again, the details and specifics will have to be in the final site plan for review and approval. Um, and a, the proposed parking reduction is based on the Institute of Transportation Engineers, ITE, parking generation manual, fifth edition, which suggests a ratio of 0 0.10 parking spaces required for 1,000 feet of gross floor area, which results in a total of 12 parking spaces for the proposed 120,600 square foot of gross floor area. That's what we're asking for. Um, no additional concerns not addressed by the applicant. Um, I'm not going to read all this, but every box is marked yes as far as the landscape, um, the, uh, the right of way, setbacks, everything, the application is compliant. Um, importantly, the staff report finds that the application is consistent with the comprehensive plan. It's consistent with the neighboring area, which are the two primary concerns in evaluating a zoning change. Staff is in support of the application. I'm not going to go into the legal standard now, but the board's decision obviously has to be based on competent and substantial evidence. Staff report, staff findings is competent and substantial evidence to support the approval of the application. I put the applicants. Um, request there, that's language prepared by staff. All we're asking is the board recommend approval of our application, those three points, the rezone, approval of the PSP, and approval of the reduction in parking. Um, I'm here with our engineer, Mr. Andrew Pluta. He can answer any specific questions about site planning that you all might have. I'm also happy to answer any questions that I can. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, <coughs> members of the board, do you have questions you'd like to ask the applicant at this time? Yes. Mr. Roth, would you speak? Yes, thank you. Uh, how many units are going to be in this self-storage? I don't know if we have a final unit amount yet. Yeah. You have been sworn, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. For the record, my name is Andrew Pluto, a licensed professional engineer with Kimley Horn here in Sarasota. Um, pleasure to be here. You want to speak um, into the mic? Yeah. Uh, County of Residence, Sarasota. Um, we've not, we are still working with the architect, uh, the design architect, to verify, you know, and finalize all three floors and the, the number of units. So, What's the maximum? What's the minimum? For number of units? Yeah. Um, I do not have that information. Well, you're asking for less parking places than is normal. Yeah. You're telling them you're going to have 12 parking places. Yes, sir. It would also mean something if we knew yeah. how many units you were going to service. Sure. Um, why don't I speak to more just gross square footage and the number of um, parking spaces, if that's okay? No, I'm more concerned about the number of units that it's going to service. That's usually how we wind up renting spaces when you have a storage facility. Sure. Um, in my experience... Um, you know, I have similar projects in other, you know, similar, similar self storage projects. Yeah. Um, with around the same amount of square footage. Um, and on that particular project, approximately 100,000 square feet, um, roughly equated to about 700 um, storage units. So, 700 storage units, and how many parking places for this? Uh, proposed right now are 12. 12? Yeah. Yes, sir. 700 units. Yeah. In a typical day, say a weekend, Sure. How many parking places do you think are going to be taken off for 100 yeah, so and some odd if, spaces? Um, I could share um, the preliminary uh, site plan, which the last sheet of that. Uh, that would be good. Okay. Yeah, great. So I guess the third to last sheet has the information uh, prepared by our traffic engineers, and I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if that can be read from my phone. Do the best you can. Okay. Okay. So um, basically inside of the preliminary site plan application, um, you'll find a traffic report that demonstrates that the expected number of PM peak hour trips is, on, is eight inbound and 10 outbound. So 
um, the number of parking spaces that we propose is greater than the number of trips that are expected per day in the PM peak. Just refresh me one more time. How many units do you think you're going to have in here? I, I, I would. All that I was trying to do was give some frame of reference. I don't know. I don't have that information. Uh, we're we're strictly we were strictly evaluating it based on gross square footage of building. Okay. Um, and one tenth, you know, per square foot, um, and that's how we arrive at twelve. So the internal, you know, the sizes of the units may vary, such that I, I can't speak confidently on that at this time. I may add one thing. Sure. <clears throat> Please put the slides back up. May I make a comment? Typically, with storage units, though, you're pulling up outside your unit, unloading or loading and leaving. So is that part of the, not necessarily parking in the parking spot, right? right? Sure. True. Okay. It is. And it, in our application materials, Exhibit B to the letter requesting the parking reduction, it contains... Uh, what's that, about nine sites, and you see the gross square footage in the second to last row, and it also contains the number of spaces at each site. So there is a 153, approximately 1,000 square foot site with only six parking spaces, um, which would be much larger than the site the applicant's proposing here with fewer parking spaces. Okay. And if we look at the data from similar sites, there is a, um, a site in Sanford, Florida, that on a, on a Saturday in February, Saturday is typically a higher volume day, there were 2.4 unique visitors per hour with the maximum of 11 unique visitors um, at any one time. At a site in Jacksonville, again on a Saturday in February, 3.3 unique visitors was an hourly average. Maximum was 12. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roth, would it be an interesting question to ask our staff what their experience was with this <coughs> parking? What a great idea. Just thinking out loud. Is there anybody from our staff? Wait, we're not there yet. But oh, okay. That's Sorry. my point is maybe we, we get to staff and then we could. Very is, good. Is there any other questions for this uh, submitter? I do. Yes, sir. You said that it currently zoned that it would. I'm sorry. Currently zoned, this is a lab, a storage unit. I'm sorry. So the, the future land use designation allows the storage unit facility. The, the rezoning. Um, I, I believe is is in part to accomplish the waiver to the number of spaces, yep. um, but it the property is currently zoned uh, for commercial uses. Okay. Thanks, right. sir. Uh, anyone else have mm -hmm. questions for the Just submitter? On the um, on the list of properties, they're all I'm sorry, they're all self storage facilities, correct? That's correct. And they're all existing. Not That's correct. And. Um, wouldn't you be able to get more data from more local because there's like one on every block now practically? <laughs> These are all, all uh, sites operated by this applicant. Okay, so you have that data. You don't necessarily know what your local stuff is. But. That's so correct. We'll, okay, so we'll ask staff about that. Thanks. Uh, anything else, Mr. Turner? Comments, thoughts? I'm good. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Well, you'll have a chance for a rebuttal. Uh, Staff. Kevin, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good, sir. Thank you. Good to see you again. Uh, Glad you're still thank here. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Kevin Oatman. I'm with Dev Development Services, and I have been sworn in. Good morning, Honorable Chair, Board Members. I would like to submit in record we had an additional um, record that was sent in to us yesterday, so I wanted to enter that into the record for you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'll, I'll get with the. Uh... You just said a cowboy boots is cheaper. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to give us credibility. You know that, right? So. All right. So the applicant um, pretty much um, said most of the general topics that I just don't really want to repeat. Again, this is a request for a rezone from neighborhood commercial to PDC. The site, of course, you're familiar with the location up there in Allenton. It is just above, just um, near the intersection of 72nd Avenue East and 301. Therefore, um, as I go into this, it's going to meet or meet the activity. It's close by an activity node. Because of the future land use of being RES9, normally it would be a 0.35 FAR floor area area ratio, because it's close to that activity node, it is allowable for the 1.0. So what the applicant is presenting to us or proposing to us is an FAR 0 0.76, excuse me. See, again, the zoning currently is NCM wanting to go to the PDC zoning district plan development. So the proposal, I just wanted to highlight on this um, this was kind of uh, some of the concerns that some of the neighborings had. Um, I do want to go back to the map here. I guess you can see as much. The vacant parcel is surrounded by other commercial businesses and services. There is a bank as well as a, you know, um, excuse me, a post office, U.S. post office to the west, as well as I believe there's a car wash to the east. The residential aspect of it is towards the north side and the northwestern side, and of course to the east, where we've got more of the single family dwellings to the east. But I just wanted to point that out to give you a better idea of the area that we're proposing this new um, use to for the mini storage. The setbacks. Uh, we were concerned more of the residential aspects. As you can see, it is, they meet the requirements for the setbacks, as well as the landscape bufferings. Those buffers are there to accommodate the residential as well as the commercial side. The right -away, roadway, uh, excuse me, roadway buffer there is 10 foot, so of course they meet that. For the remainder adjacent property sides, which to the north and the east is adjacent to the residential, they are asking for the 20 foot buffer and it is, they do meet the 20 foot buffer for the landscape. As well as they are providing a six foot opaque wall along the north side, eastern side, as well as the south side. So again, the specific approval that they're requesting is the reduction for the parking. That's the this, um, parking reduction that you were concerned about from the, excuse me, from 26 down to 12. And from our staff, we were going by the Transportation Engineers Parking Generation Manual 5th edition. That's the most recent edition. That they recommended that for every thousand square foot is a 0 0.10 parking space, which uh, comes out to be about 12 parking spaces for this. And again, as the applicant said, we were based on this parking analysis based on the square footage that has been proposed, which was the 120,600, uh, 120,600 square feet. These are pretty much the same thing that we came up with as the applicants as for the positive aspects. It's non-residential project is proposed for the appropriate location. The proximity of the residential, it will serve the residentials around it. And with that being said, that will hopefully reduce the travel distances and the contributes to maintaining the roadway level of service. As expected, a little bit of the negative aspects. Because residential <laughs> is adjacent to it, we can possibly look at the um, impacts that may be the light and the sound from the proposed mini service, uh, mini storage use may affect on the residential aspects. But with those mitigating measures, we've got, of course, those buffers and the landscape buffers that are presented to you today that will help might mitigate those situations as well at the FSP level, the light siding plan will be submitted to accommodate that. 
With that, I'm going to end it, I guess, of course, with the proposed stipulation and the specific approval that they are asking. Staff finds that this request is to be consistent with the policies of the Comprehensive Code and applicable requirements of the LDC. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Robin. Yes, ma'am. Did you have something? Is there, uh, the neighborhood commercial media, neighborhood commercial allowed the uh, mini warehouse as a use, but need a special permit. Okay. In order to confirm the information that the applicant provides. Claro. Uh, so one question I have, in its current zoning format, the R9, could they get 35 feet and have four stories of apartments, conceptually? An MCM? With the current zoning. MCM? Uh, R9. Yes. Yes, MCM allowed a residential, but I have to see the height. The height, yes. I'm trying to correlate the concern of the residents saying people looking over. When we talk about apartments, everybody's concerned they're looking over into their neighborhood. They could do that without the zoning. And, uh, they comply with the 401.5, that the, the minimum separation. More than three stories is what required 20 feet additional, and they have only three stories. Okay. And this is not a traditional configuration of a piece of property, is it, uh, Mr. Ong? No, sir. Oh. As the applicant stated, you can see it's very long and narrow, so that's why some of the parking is spaced out from the top, from the north side down to the south side as well. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And you made a specific statement as how these nodes try to encompass. So when I saw your photograph, this land kind of follows the node from the other side of the street in extending off 301 to give that note a, a more ferocious kind of yes, sir, identity, correct. right? I mean, that's, you're implying that, right? Yes, sir, correct. Uh, Mr. Roth, do you have questions? You sent us this, you gave us this note from Mr. Tomaz. Have we alleviated any of the problems that he's going to have with water? So um, we will, I have someone here that could speak on the concerns for the stormwater as well. Denise, were you going to be able to? Thank you. I think I'm going to go down to the podium just because I have a graphic. If you choose, yep. please. Thanks. Have you been sworn? <laughs> I want to look like I'm doing my job, even if I'm. <laughs> Good try. Yeah, right. It's, it's all a show. Denise Groove for staff, and I have been sworn. So with regards to um, their drainage concerns, I did look at this, and I don't, okay, it's up on the map, thank you. So right now their plan shows a stormwater pond in the northern area discharging to the wetland. Um, and remember, this is a preliminary site plan, so uh, final documents have not been submitted. Um, but we have discussed with the applicant that they'll need to look at the drainage basins and where the drainage goes now in the existing condition. Um, the majority of the site drains to the east, which you can see with my arrows here, um, with the ultimate discharge point at the very southern end. So this area, it's hard to read these um, spot shots, but there is topo on here, but it's very hard to read. I apologize. Um, it all drains mainly to the south. The river is just to the south of here on the other side of uh, US 301. So it naturally drains to the south. There is a small basin that goes to the wetland and um, they will be required to hydrate that wetland um, since it's not being impacted. So they will have to discharge a small amount over to that wetland. But as required by our code and Swift Muds code, they have to maintain existing drainage patterns and they cannot allow more runoff to go off the site than presently does go off the site. So they'll have to maintain these existing drainage patterns. Does and that? So what we always kind of say, do no harm, right? They're not allowed to design it and put water off to some other location. <coughs> I learned, I got smarter last time we are here and I understand that we also can't stop the water from going onto other people's property as a desirable conduct. So. Um, you're comfortable as a professional. This is a an approach they understand are going to resolve in their final site plan engineering. Yes, that will be covered in their final site plan construction engineering. And Kimley Horn is very aware of um, that type of 
design consideration. We can call the chairman pretty quickly, right? <laughs> uh, any other questions in regards to the drainage issue? Mr. Roth? Well, has our irrigation, uh, has Tom signed off on this, do you know? Um, well, Tom did sign off on this, but he does not review these aspects anymore. These go through development services now, but he actually did review this one, and yes, he did sign off. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, so Kevin, I, you, I, I assume you mean Tom Gerstenberger. Yes. Is there another? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Somebody no, else's hand up. Uh, so, so, Kevin, uh, you're comfortable this is processed the ways. Okay. And actually, it's Tom Gerstenberger's uh, conditions that are in your staff report. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the... Do you want me to address anything else in the... Well, memo? I guess my question is, is the following that. These questions are highly detailed, very specific, and I just want to make sure that we just got them today, but you've seen these, and as a, as a staff, this doesn't change your recommendation. Correct, and this actually just came in to me this morning, and so we plan on returning um, this gentleman's email, okay. let him know these things, um, and we'll move forward in that way. Good. And, and I think this is part of our critical, one thing is you do your job and then explain how you do your job. So, uh, and I think you guys do a great job. I, and I say guys in the general sense of being men, women, and everybody else, that, that we appreciate that. And I, a quick drawing like this this morning is very helpful. Thanks. Great. That's your noun. Sir? <laughs> he did say one thing about um, in one of his items that he felt like there had been fill placed on the site. We couldn't find any evidence of that um, reviewing the site. It's just the natural lay of the land. It kind of drains north e or southeast. Um, and that's their, their property is lower than the adjacent property. Okay. And, and when they balance the site, they have to address all this. The engineering will show us how they're not going to impact the neighbors in a negative Correct. way. Correct. Okay. Uh, any other questions for staff? Yes, sir. You, is your parking tuition done? Okay, so do we have, thank you very much. You may return to the target area. Um, so at this point, uh, do we have anybody in the public that would like to speak on this particular issue? Have I made a mistake? Okay. Yes, if you'd come forward and say your name and what county you reside in, and uh, your insight would be appreciated. You're the other Tom, huh? <laughs> good, mo good morning, staff. I have been sworn. Um, my name is Tom Mazaluski, nice the other Tom. Um, and we are the property owners directly of the three lots to the east of this property. And uh, I just want to preface um, this um, meeting by saying we have no objections to increase um, in capacity and intensity. We have no, no objections to the decrease in um, parking. Uh, it is a storage facility. Um, it's not a school. It's not a major commercial development. Uh, from hearing in the hearing, I just want to make sure that it is a storage facility. Um, and I know warehouse is being used as a term. Warehouse and store, storage facility is a little different, so I just want to make sure it is a storage facility, not a warehouse. Maybe it's used interchangeably, but uh, <coughs> just to make sure that it is a 120 square foot uh, storage Tough facility. Story. And we know at the end the uh, amount of units, as um, uh, Mr. Roth uh, has requested. So. I placed this uh, just on the lot, and thank you for addressing the questions and concerns. I left a call um, with Mr. Oltman on Monday, and we spoke yesterday, and I sent a follow-up email regarding that. And I know this is preliminary. It's a planning uh, commission submittal. This is further developed. I'm fully aware of Kimley Horn, Andrew. Uh, I personally have worked with Kimley Horn before and other projects. I work in architecture and design as well. Um, so the only concern, my mom being the owner, is kind of what we discussed, is just to make sure that one, there is a property wall, it's dissimilar uses. Um, if there is a property wall, uh, I know it's an opaque wall, can we confirm if it's a solid wall, is it a vinyl? I know that they'll be further developed, is it a precast wall, six foot, eight foot, uh, typically between dissimilar uses. How will that wall, the property line, um, impact or will it go through that existing wetland in the north? or it's gonna go around it. Um, they are mitigating, removing the southeastern wetland. My question was, B 
because I noticed that the emergency spill off from the pond is going into the wetland um, and everything is flowing towards our end. I, we did not know there was a wetland. It's great to know that we had a wetland, <laughs> but I do know that um, uh, the five years when the site was cleared, we've received more water on our site. I wasn't sure why, but that's where we're looking at the existing elevation points. Uh, I did notice that it was two, three foot higher, even at the property line than where our property begins. So that was just my question. I'm not saying anything or anything was done or not. If it's flowing that way and then it's flo flowing south, um, as stated, towards the river, and that's going to be maintained, then um, we have no concerns of staff. And of course, the building department and the civil engineers and reviewers have um, no, no issues with that. So those were our two concerns. So my question is, if they mitigated, impacted the southern one, could they remove that one <laughs> and increase the retention pond? But I don't know, cost-wise, how that affects it. But Tom, thanks for coming in. Great points. It. Thanks for being very concise yeah. and informed. It's great. It's great to have you come in. Thanks. Well, thank you. Is there anybody else in the public that would like to make comments in regard to this submission? No, and if not, then we will close public hearing, and then we will ask the uh, submitter if you will step forward and comment as you see appropriate, but I think specifically about uh, uh, the public's comments that uh, I thought were very specific. Please. Uh, yes, sir, absolutely. So uh, this is a self-storage facility contemplated. The um, warehouse designation comes from the code to mean self-storage warehouse or sort of interchangeably in the code, but this is a self-storage facility. In the final site plan, we will address all landscape buffering in much more detail. Um, it is indicated on the current PSP, but on the final site plan, we will need to show where, what, how big, all the finer details to, um, I believe, address the concerns raised. The drainage plan also will be part of the final site plan. Um, we are aware of the code. We have been working with staff, and we will um, ensure the final site plan contains all information about drainage. Um, I'll defer to Mr. Plute with some more details. I just want to conclude by saying again um, that this is a preliminary site plan. A lot of the questions and comments addressed today are uh, better focused at the final site plan in, in the finer points and details conveyed therein. Um, again, I want to reiterate that staff is in um, agreement with the application. Staff recommends approval. The staff recommendation and comments here today are competent substantial evidence to support the application. And um, Mr. Pluta, do you want to add anything Thank about? Yeah. yeah, please. Um, I'd like to just take a chance to, to hit uh, other Tom's comments and, and thank Denise for her, um, you know, exhibit and markup. Um, again, we'll, we'll be required to maintain historic drainage patterns. Um, a portion of the site does drain to the southeast um, and we'll be required to, to maintain that. But with respect to the actual wetland, as Denise mentioned, we'll be required to maintain the wetland hydrograph to make sure we're not flooding the wetland or drying the wetland out. Um, so there will absolutely be, you know, uh, kind of a back door in that northeast corner. But again, um, all of the, you know, more detailed drainage modeling and, and um, analysis is occurring now and will be prepared and submitted with a file site plan. Okay. Any other further comments you wish to provide to the staff? I mean, to the commission? No, thank you. Mr. Thanks very much. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. He asked about a fence. Well, yeah, I was going to ask staff about that, but have you designed the fence yet or other than the obligation under the code? you have further information on that? The, uh, no, sir. There, there is no specific design yet for a wall. Um, that is something, again, for the final site plan. Can I ask one other question? This development group that's building this, have they built in Manatee County before? I'm, I'm not sure. Yes, sir. There's a, uh, a store space, has another location on 30th Street West, uh, south of Cortez, over by, um, uh, you know, Cortez and 41, but a little bit more west than that. Yep. Um, and they are, they purchased a, a previously uh, a fence manufacturing facility, and they're proposing to modify that. So um, this, I would classify as sort of a redevelopment, a repurposement of a site, and, you know, I think, believe this is their first um, ground up. 
Okay. So they're in the community. They're working within the, the code. They have other commitments. That's kind of interesting to me. I don't know if it's legal to ask that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Sorry. Not? No. <laughs> okay. What type, what type of fence is required? Oh, that's staff. Let's ask staff. Can I clarify something? Oh. oh. Sorry. My, my bad. Can I? No, sorry. Let, they, he'd like to ask the no, I mean, It doesn't make any difference who answers about the applicants or what it has to prove. Um. I just want to add that um, there is stipulated on the plan that they are proposing a six-foot OPEC wall. However, um, as well as, as in LDC section 531.31, if they are using a concrete block or masonry wall as the rear warehouse structure wall, which this is, that's allowable to serve that purpose as well. But I just wanted to let you know, on the current plans for the PSP, they do stipulate the six-foot wall, OPEC wall, for the all boundaries with the exception of the right-of-way, uh, which is to the west. And one of the questions that came up was about how it's, uh, Tom asked, sorry, the uh, public asked about how it is addressed through the wetlands portion, which is on the property line. That, I, I, I do not believe it's addressed on there because, again, for this purpose, for the PSP, oh, it just states that a six-foot wall will be placed on those adjacent um, boundaries, but it doesn't stipulate where exactly. So to I be determined that, at final yes, site. Yes, sir, that at the final site plan level, that will be stipulated in detail. Can I ask your professional opinion? Uh, it's kind of my novice opinion that uh, most parking requirements that we've seen from historic dates have been reduced. They're reducing those because of how retail's being done and so forth. And so the reduction in the parking, which seems to maximize the green space they have, because it's a pretty significant green space, which I like, is, is that, are you comfortable with that? Do you see that the same way, that less parking isn't, more parking isn't a, a mandate these days as it was at one time? What's your thought on that, the professional? Yes, sir. With, with today's society and the way people are utilizing some of our commercial services, especially the mini warehouse, um, you know, the parking or the demand for parking is reduced or less uh, recommended. But so for this purpose, I think it will serve for what they are wanting to present, especially in the area that it's at and because of the way the uh, property and the um, proposed structure is set. I think this will best meet for what the client or the applicant is asking for as well as the surrounding area. Yes, sir. And, and I, I appreciate Mr. Ross' thoughts because he's a very knowledgeable real estate guy. So I, it comes to my mind that if they do a bad job in designing the parking, which I'm not saying you did, but if you have done that and have less parking, we have more green space as a community, uh, and you s lease less spaces because people don't like to pull in and can't get in or whatever, it's kind of your decision, and you've asked for it, so you get it. And I, I don't have any particular problem with that, but I, I understand the question. Any, any other thoughts from for staff that we want to Just share? on that one, you mentioned there was another um, self-storage in Manatee County that this company is redeveloping. It's not a brand new, but what do you know the parking data on that one? Um, we, I can kind of speak to that. Um, Kim and Horn's also working with storage space on that location. Um, we submitted and got approved an off-street parking plan that um, basically some of the parking areas were uh, a little tired, and um, we demonstrated that uh, that parking requirement is was still accommodated. So I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but um, through the approved off-street parking plan, we demonstrated that some of the um, the redevelopment will still uh, the parking spaces will still suffice for the redevelop the the new use, right? So we went from a manufacturing use, which, you know, had employees into a uh, self-storage use, basically. Okay. Um, right. And then I also mentioned, you know, with respect to, like, the loading areas, um, on both uh, kind of bays and ends of, of the um, parking areas, there are, there are, you know, parking spaces, and then there are loading areas also. Um, so I know if, if there was a situation where we needed more parking, I would imagine, you know, there'd be an ability to stripe out um, one of the uh, loading areas, for example. So... Um, there, there are certainly uh, loading areas. And this is your Kimberly Horn's professional recommendation as the number of parking spaces they need? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Any, Rutledge. Yes, ma'am. 
Kevin, could you explain a little bit further? You brought up the fact that they're allowed to use the wall of the building as that um, wall that we would typically see in the landscaping area. Correct. Can you just explain that wherever okay. there's not the building, the wall will have to be extended from the building? So it's not just the building. I just wanted to make sure that you understood that. They will have to so extend a property. wall. Correct. But right. I believe their um, environmental consultant is here to discuss the wall through the wetland. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Joel Christian. I'm a senior scientist with Ardura out of Palmetto. I'm the environmental consultant for this project, and I have been sworn. Okay. Um, typically, the wall would not go through the wetland area. It would be located on the landward side of the wetland buffer. Okay. So where you have that wetland line, you have a 30-foot wetland buffer. That wall or fence will be on the landward side of that. They don't cut through. No, it, the, it, it uh, severs uh, that small portion of wetland from wildlife utilization. We wouldn't want to gotcha, do that. Gotcha. Um, so typically, it's it's outside of the wetland buffer. Okay. And the wetland buffer will have to go through the restoration requirements of land development code. All nuisance exotics will need to be removed, and we'll plant some native vegetation that would be typical of a wetland buffer in a more natural state. Did you find pepper bushes or something in there that needs to be removed? Uh, you have a study I for mean, that? I mean, it's Manatee County. They're everywhere. <laughs> I've heard that. Uh, okay, any, any other questions for, I'm sorry, you, you can't speak again, I'm sorry. Um, sure. Mr. Roth. I'm good. That's I'm good lost. to hear. Huh? I'm good. Nothing. All right. Um, with that being the case, uh, I think we're going to close all comments with staff. Last chance to make a comment, uh, commissioners. Uh, with that, um, I'll call for a motion. And Ms. Kimbys have um, made the motion and seconded. Uh, we I ask you to vote now. Um, and for some reason, I can't see what the vote was. Can somebody see the vote? Yes, Mr. Wast. Okay. Ah, and there is. So it passes 6-0 with one abstention uh, being the uh, chair who has uh, stepped aside. So with that, it passes. Uh, is there any other business for the board that we should address prior to bring it to close? Uh, the chairman has decided to leave the pre He's left. Elvis has left the building. Um, if not... I thank you all very much. I want to thank staff, all submitters. I want to thank the community, Tom, for coming. Uh, with that, meeting is closed and adjourned.